Hey guys, this is Dow Too Fast here, and this is a video that I've wanted to do for a while. Um, what I'm going to show you in this video is how to put together a Cat5 cable, uh, both a straight through and also a crossover uh, cable, uh, Cat5 cable, Ethernet cable. Uh, what I have in front of me is the pinout for both the straight through and the crossover that uh, you need to know. Uh, to make those cables. Let's first talk about uh, the pinout on the Cat5. So you see there are actually two sections mentioned here. And let me kind of put this in the frame here so you can see it. Top part is the EIA 568A and the bottom part is the EIA 568B. Uh, and you'll notice that the color uh, between these two uh, differ slightly. So what you need to know is that if you're making a straight through uh, Cat5 cable, what you want is that both end of that cable to have this same pinout. Okay, so if you have same pinout on both ends of that one cable, then it's a straight through. If you want to make a crossover cable, what you'll need is that one end need to be this wiring pinout. On the other end, you need to have this one. Okay, so they differ. And let's go through this. Basically, you have uh, starting with pin one, pin one to eight. Okay. So starting with pin one, you have a uh, white green, green, white orange, uh, blue, white blue, orange, white brown, and brown. And on the uh, crossover side is white orange, orange, white green, blue, white blue, green, white brown, brown. So these are the pinouts that you need to know. You can Google it uh, for um, like Ethernet uh, pinouts on on the internet, and you can find these readily available. Okay. There's one little trick that um, you should know about these two pinouts you actually only have to remember one of them and why I say that is because usually I remember just this top one because the difference between this top one and the bottom one is actually all you have to do is flip the orange and the green what I mean is this see how it starts with the white green green if you look at this one is white orange orange and you just flip it basically to make this connector to the bottom instead of using the orange in the beginning you start with the green and anything that's green here up here is actually orange you, you flip the two colors that's all you gotta do so memorize one and just remember that to make the other end for crossover just flip the uh, orange and uh, green color now let me show you uh, the uh, cat5 connector that you need these are what they call RJ45 connectors and on the top there's a tab there's a locking tab so when you plug it into a device, it'll lock it in place. Uh, this end here is where you feed the cable. And if you look down on this side here, that's where you see the metal pins. Okay. And to know which one is pin 1 to 8, what you want to do is, if you have it this way, flip this over. Okay, so the cable is coming in on the left side and the metal pins on the right side starting from the top is pin 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 that's how you count the pins on the RJ45 connector now a couple of things that you'll need to make a cat5 cable is you'll need a wire stripper and also a crimper these are very inexpensive uh, you can buy these uh, at most uh, a home hardware stores, I think Radio Shack still sells these online. Um, if you have like Fry's Electronics nearby, you can get it from them. Now, this tool is basically a, um, uh, a cutter to strip the insulator. There's a blade inside here with different gauges of wire. Let's first grab a cable, and what I have here is I have a red. Cat5 cable that uh, one end already has a connector. Okay, and if you 
look at it, um, the tab is broken, so I'm going to have to cut this off and get rid of it. It's rather short cable, but I'm going to just show it to you as an example, okay? So what you want to do, the first thing is get the cutter and just give it about, say, an, an inch and a half, okay? You don't want to make it too short. I just put it around this size here on the cutter and just a couple of turns and it comes out. Now you don't want to keep on twisting it because it starts cutting into the uh, inside wires. All right, And we can go ahead and prep this one also. So just do this, quick turn. Okay. So the first thing I would do is I would take each pair and what you'll find is that they're twisted. These are unshielded twisted pair, as they call it. And I would go ahead and untwist these wires. All right. So these are nicely untwisted. Okay. Let me put it against this background so you can see it. All right. Let's start with this one side. On this cable, I'm going to go ahead and do um, one end is going to be your uh, 568A pinout. And on the other end, I'm going to do the 568B pinout, so this will become a crossover cable. All right. Now, starting with the top here, you see that it says green white. So, and I, I'll move it up top. So this is green white. Okay. It might be a little hard to see the uh, stripe, but green white, and I'll hold it in place with my with my fingers here, followed by it orange white and I'll grab the orange white and I'll line it up again I'm just using my two fingers here to hold it in place followed by a white sorry followed by a blue and a white blue and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take both of them <coughs> and place it like this again I'm just keeping it all in place it's all flat against my finger here all right followed by the orange followed by the white brown and then brown Actually, let me flip this over I don't like it all twisted <clears throat> alright so let me carefully rotate this while still holding on so it's still in the same order I'm not messing up the order okay with this type of crimper there's a cutter here Right, so what you want to do is basically feed this in here. Again, don't lose sight of the layout of the of the wires. All right, and give it about say that's about about half an inch or so. Okay, and then you want to cut this off. Again, always hold down the wire so you don't lose it. All right, now. Again, I flipped this connector earlier, look at it this way, where pin 1 is on top. So I'm going to turn this over this way, where pin 1 is at the bottom now. And this is where you feed the wire. I'm going to carefully put this in here, slowly. And once you get it in there, you'll be able to slide the wire in there until the insulated jacket is in this part of the connector. Okay. The next thing you want to do is look on the side, make sure the wire is fed all the way to the end. If it's not all the way to the end, let's say you cut it too short, it's over back over here, you need to start all over. Okay, so these wires are all fed in there. Okay. Push it in, make sure everything's all seated properly. And then uh look for the eight pin crimper here. Put this in here. Okay, and now just give it a squeeze. Nice tight squeeze here. And this side is done. So this is the 568A pinout that I just did on this end. And let me quickly do the other one where I'm going to put the uh, crossover end. Alright, so I'm not going to go over all the procedure. I'm just going to quickly do this one so you see how the crossover side works or looks like when it's done. Get it all unraveled first. 
starting with uh, white orange orange white green I like to look at the bottom here and make sure they're not tangled up so they're nice and clean and easy to get into the connector later on brown white and the brown again I just like to work it this direction so I'm gonna I like to somehow squeeze it and twist it so I make it all flat do that so go ahead and cut this so make sure you hold hold it down carefully so this is gonna slowly feed into here feed this wire in here on a crimper put on a crimper and crimp it down So there you go. If I put this uh, end to end, you see that the top one starts with the white green green, and the bottom one starts with the white orange orange. So this makes it a crossover cable. Now, a couple of things I want to point out. After you crimp it, you should do an inspection on it. Again, one is that the the jacket, the insulator on the wire, is seated in. Because this adds strain relief, okay, to the cable when it's plugged in. I've seen it where some people make a cable where the jacket is actually completely out. So the whole tension of this cable is held in by the pins here. And uh, the weight of the cable will actually cause some of these wires to come loose. Okay. The other thing I've seen is, depending on what type of crimper you've used, I've had... Um, this guy that made some made, actually made a lot of RJ45 uh, connectors where I had to go back and, and cut off the ends and redo it because um, the crimper he used, he actually used a very expensive one. I think like this one here, I think I picked up for like 16 bucks uh, back in the day at Radio Shack. He picked up one that was like, I don't know, 80, 90 dollars. It was a ratcheting one. I mean, it looks really fancy and cool. Um, the die that was on the crimper was I don't know if there's something wrong with the die or, or whatever it is but basically if you look at the end of it after he crimped it I mean he, he crimped that thing tight you would actually see the pins the first and last pin is crimped down and then it starts bowing up top near the middle so like the pin like three four five um, they were actually not even crimped down onto the wire making no contact and he thought it was good. I mean, he made hundreds of them, plugged into the equipment. Next thing we know is that they, they had no connectivity, no link on the switch or the router. So we had to fix all that. So what I usually like to do is just look at the ends of it, make sure the pins are all flat. They're all crimped down. And you actually also see on the side where the middle tab is crimped down. All right. I will uh, do a second video. And this second video is actually a cable tester uh, for Cat5. Um, and uh, you'll see there's a switch here. I, I won't get into that. I, I added that switch uh, for another reason, uh, which is not important. But anyways, uh, I'll, I'll show you another video how to use these testers. They're very inexpensive. You can get these uh, a lot of places for like 15, 20 bucks. But they're handy. So. If you have any comments, uh, leave me a comment below, and if you like the video, uh, please subscribe. Alright, thank you for watching.